Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of how to use the JavaScript Fetch API. And the reason that I'm creating this video is because I had a user comment on part one and they wanted to know how to display the data that we get back from the fetch call. Now, before I show you how to do that, I just want to make a quick recap of what we did in part one, just in case you haven't seen that. So I was basically just showing you how to use the JavaScript Fetch API to make API calls. We use the Unsplash API and the cat API as examples. And the reason that we use these two is just to show you that you can use the code that I gave you in part one on different APIs. The only thing that really changes is the endpoint to the API, All right? And this is the data that we returned from the cat API. As you can see, we got a JSON object of 10 images. And to view these images, you can just copy the URL that is returned paste it in your browser and you'll be able to see the images. But of course we want to be able to see these images on our actual project. And that's what we're going to learn how to do. All right, let's look at the code. So this is the code that I taught you in part number one. This is pretty straightforward. If you're interested in learning how this code works, then go ahead and watch part one. It's very, very simple. And this is the endpoint to the cat API. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is create a CSS file. Go ahead and create one if you haven't already. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some styling to a class that we're gonna create. We're gonna call it images. And all we wanna do is use display flex and flex wrap wrap. And the reason that we're adding this is so when we display the images, there's actually some structure to them and they're not like all wacky and out of place. All right, so we wanna concentrate on this part here, console log data. As we know, the data that we're returning from the fetch call is this data here, All right? So how do we go about accessing this data? We know that this has 10 images, but for instance, how do we access the URL from the first one? Well, that's actually quite simple. All we have to do is include the index. So we start at index zero, that's gonna display the first image. So how do we access the actual URL? All we have to do is use this here. So this is the key, this is the value. All right, so we do dot URL, and that's going to give us the actual URL. All right, so we know that we have 10 images. We know that, but the computer doesn't know that. So how do we find out? All we have to do is do data, data dot length. I get confused with data or data. Different people call it different things. I, I prefer to use data. Sometimes I get confused. Anyways, so data.length gives us the amount of uh, images that we have in this array. So knowing this, we can just create a for loop and go through each of the images and display them on the screen. So let me show you how we're going to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a div. We're going to call it images. And to create a div, we do document, create element, div. All right, now let's create a for loop and we're gonna go and loop through all of these images. So if i is less than images dot, no, not images, sorry. If i is less than data dot length, i plus plus. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an image for each one of the URLs that we have. So let's do document, create element, and we're gonna create a image tag. And now let's access the source of the image tag and we're going to set it equal to the URL of our data. So data i dot URL. All right. So now that we have that, we want to add this image onto our images div here. So let's do images dot append child and image. All right. So this is going to do this 10 times and once that's done, we want to add these images onto our HTML here. Now we don't have any structure here. We're just going to be adding them onto our body. Now, if you can make this as complicated as you want, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to be adding them on there just so you can see how you would go about doing that. So we do document dot body append child, and then we're going to add the images. All right. So now, if we look at our project, we can see that we have the 10 images, All right? So that was very simple. 
if we refresh the page we see that we have 10 different images because when we make a fetch call to the cat api it returns 10 different images now i do want to warn you that this is not how you're going to go about accessing the data 100 percent of the time because different apis return data differently for instance let me show you once again what the data looks like of this particular api all right so if i look at my console i'll be able to see the object that got returned this is pretty straightforward this is a very simple api now let me show you the data of the unsplash api so you can see that it's a lot different so i'm going to change this here to the unsplash endpoint and I'm going to add user input in here. I'm going to delete this. And if you watched part number one, you know why we're doing this. So please make sure to watch that part if you haven't already. All right. So let's go back over here. And this time we're going to search for anything. I'm going to search for monster images. And as you can see, we don't have any images on the screen, despite the fact that we're using the same code that we used for the cat API. Now, why is that happening? Because the json object that is being returned is completely different from the cat api so different apis return their data differently so you have to go about it a little bit differently but as long as you know how to access data from json objects you will be able to figure it out now how do you learn how to do that well basically you just have to practice and if you don't know how to do something just use google and one more thing that i want to point out is to keep your code organized so i know that here i went ahead and displayed this data on the front end but you typically don't want to do that you want to keep everything organized so let's go ahead and create a function that is called display data and we're going to paste that in here we technically don't need that and now we're just going to call the function from here all right so this way this function is taking care of the fetch call and then this function is taking care of displaying the data on the screen all right that's going to be it for this video please make sure to hit the like button if you found this useful and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching